Hi guys, welcome back to Golden Reviewer. Today we are going to test this uh, Redmi K40 Gaming Special Edition. So this device comes with uh, MTK Dimensity 1200 SoC, which is uh, quite rare on the market. And it's supposed to provide similar performance to that of the best from Qualcomm. But my early test of uh, spec int already showed that this SoC is a little bit worse than Snapdragon. 865 from last year. Also, we'll actually run some Genshin Impact game today and see how it performs in a real-world gaming scenario. Uh, this device does not support Google service yet, but the support is coming soon, so I'm running the Chinese version of the game, which should be the same as the global version anyway. And of course, as you can see, every graphic settings is the same as the global version and set to highest possible. Okay, so I'll follow my normal testing routine. I'll play around the same area uh, for about 10 minutes and uh, during the gameplay, I'll show you the actual FPS. Of course, you are free to skip to the end of the video for the full FPS and power result. Also, I'll put this result into my full Genshin Impact performance uh, spreadsheet for you to understand uh, where this device sits. Alright, so before we start, I ask you to give me a thumb up and uh, subscribe to my channel and also share this video to your friends who might be interested in this device. Alright, without further ado, let's go.
如何？动情吧。
收并蓄。Alright, guys. So you might have noticed that uh, this device actually somehow limits the max FPS in the game to 50. So it's definitely a software limitation, and I think it's a careful decision from Xiaomi, because running the game at 60 FPS will result in too much power consumption and heat, and they might think um, it's not worth it. So let's just run the game at 50, you won't notice anyway, the difference is minimal, but we can save a lot of power and make your device a lot cooler that way. But as a result, the average FPS is uh, not high, uh, you, you can't really compare this to other devices which uh, cap the FPS at 60, right? So the average FPS we got is 49.2, and we see that most of the time, the device could maintain a 50 FPS. But of course, uh, during combat and more complicated scenarios, the FPS will drop, but it's nothing too serious. If we move on to power consumption, as I think we see why Xiaomi limits the FPS to 50. Even at 50 FPS, the device is using 6.5 watt of power. So imagine if we lift that limit and allow the game to run at 60 FPS, the power consumption will be even much higher, maybe 7 or 8 watt, which is not good for this device because it doesn't even have a fan, okay? Lastly, I put the result into my spreadsheet uh, so that you know where this device sits. You can see that uh, in general, this device performs a bit worse than that of uh, Snapdragon 888 or Snapdragon 865 devices. The performance is a little bit lower while the power consumption is at around the same level. Okay, so in general, I think this device and the SoC performs okay, it's not bad, but uh, there are better options on the market, and uh, I don't really understand why they specially market this as a gaming phone, because apparently it's not really that good at gaming at all. Okay, alright guys, so that's all for today's test. Thanks for watching, and uh, see you next time.